It is a very soupy day today, uh, very humid. Our high today is supposed to be 105, I believe. Um, I haven't checked it this morning, but that's what it was last night when I last checked. It feels warm. So I'm sure later on this afternoon is going to be really hot. Um, I'm going to, I'm just getting everything watered. Typical morning in my books. Actually, let me take that back. I'm not watering everything. So my onions are actually completely dying back. And honestly, today's heat and tomorrow's heat might actually take these out. Um, I've actually pulled a handful of them because we had rain and they already flopped over and I didn't want them to do like any type of rotting or anything. So I'm starting to have a lot more flop. And every day I have more and more flop. So I need to get the garlic, I need to double check the garlic. I'm pretty sure the garlic's done. I need to get the garlic down and cleaned up and then I need to get ready to turn around and do these onions. I'm also not watering potatoes at this time either. Potatoes are also currently dying back. I'm, my whole plan was to not water onions and potatoes for the last few weeks. Um, onions, we still got a little bit of rain like I just mentioned, but uh, yeah, I'm just letting those kind of slowly start to dry out as everything is already starting to die back. Okay, so here's a little closer look at the onions. You can see how they are starting to flop over. Those are your first signs that they are starting to get ready to harvest. So once a few more or about eh, half or so start to flop over and depending on our weather, if I have some that flop over and we have a bunch of rain coming, I will probably go ahead and pull them. I have some really, really beautiful onions in here. This is definitely my best year I've ever had in onions and I'm so impressed with the harvest I'm going to get out of all three of these beds. Also, look at the Goldie Honey Bear. It is really starting to bloom. We have a few more that are really starting to take off. It is so gorgeous. But this is one of the main reasons for getting up early this morning. We have a bunch of cayennes we need to harvest and we have a few paprikas we can harvest as well. We are kind of in the calm before the storm when it comes to harvesting. Like I said, onions and potatoes are going to be out within the next week to two weeks. Potatoes might be three weeks depending. Um, really, I don't know how fast those are going to die back, but the onions I feel like will be out here pretty soon. Once the onions are out, we are going through a whole other phase because I also have to start thinking ahead for fall. In July, I have to start broccoli and cabbage and a few other things that aren't as quick to start up. Um, so you already have to think about fall in the middle of really a lot of harvesting. So this today's the first time I'm doing any type of harvesting of peppers. So this is really exciting. These cayennes look absolutely beautiful. The only thing I've really been getting out of here consistently, um, I would say the last like week is cucumbers. I really started to swim in cucumbers. I really need to mess with um, another batch today. I also have to harvest some cucumbers. I'm also going to dry peppers. Um, and there's a few other things like I need to harvest dill for pickles. Yeah, there's, I have a list because I tend to forget and I wanted to get a lot of this done this morning. Cause again, it's supposed to be really, really hot. So <laughs> we'll see how, we'll see how the day rolls out. These cayennes are just beautiful. I'm so impressed. I am starting to get a few other things uh, starting to turn. Like I have a bunch of cherries that are starting to blush. I have a few Roma starting to blush. Same with San Marzano's. Um, ooh, I need to trellis up or um, cradle up my melons. My, mel my watermelons are starting to get pretty heavy. Our June was actually pretty cool. Um, we stayed really consistent in the 80s. Um, we're just now gearing up into this heat. And last year and the years prior, the last few were really, really warm. And we also got a good amount of rain this June too. So I feel like everything's doing really well and it's ready to really just go. We are, we are ready to take off. And especially with all this warm weather coming through, I expect this garden to really blow up over the next few weeks, to be honest. So it looks like somehow I missed, I was having a few older jalapenos. So I had a few jalapenos turn red. Uh, this is what sriracha is made out of. So I'm, I'm cool with that. Looks like I need to pick a few jalapenos, which will be good for the, uh, what's it called? It'll be good for, <laughs> it'll be good for the pickles. <laughs> These are some beautiful jalapenos beautiful 
Ooh, uh, check this one out. Not gonna do too many today, but I will grab a few that look a little bit ready to go. Ooh, that's a beautiful one too. So I never was a July girl until I started to garden and now July is probably one of my absolute favorite months because it's when the garden booms. It's so beautiful. Also, I don't want to jinx it, but the last few years I've had terrible luck with bells. Look how beautiful these bells are looking. Oops. Wow, look at that beauty. So this year I only decided to plant four bells uh, because last year I planted out an entire bed almost and they completely flunked. Same with the year prior. I don't know what went on because my three years prior to that I had beautiful bell peppers. So I was like, let's scale this up. I scaled it up and it was just not, not good. So I decided to dumb it down this year and do a few things differently. And so far it's looking like those might be working. We'll see, I can't jinx it yet. It's only, only the almost beginning of July. <laughs> oh my gosh <gasps> this one completely got away from me and it's stuck in the fence <laughs> okay this is pretty cool I don't know how I missed it that's why I kept backing up and re-looking you just never know they really get disguised check that out it is completely stuck in there uh-oh I knew I was probably gonna crack it oh geez man there we go. We'll give this to the chickens. <laughs> Here, girls. Ready? Have fun. Chickens uh, make you feel better for pretty much wasting food, but they get to eat it, so it's not a waste. But look at these watermelons. They're starting to get pretty heavy, so yeah, I need to get these cradled up. Yeah, we got some beautiful melons going on. Cantaloupe is starting to uh, form little melons as well. As you can see, the loofah plant has so many beautiful flowers. Also the squash. The squash has a bunch of flowers going on as well. Everything's just going crazy. Like I said, it's the crazy time of year. Beautiful. We got a nice little harvest going on this morning. Check it out. Clipping some dill. Might clip a few of the flowers today, we'll see. Probably will need a good amount. I have, I probably have an additional 20, give or take um, cucumbers in the fridge ready to be pickled. So I got a lot I need to pickle today. And I think I'm going to be canning today over fermenting. I fermented cucumbers with you guys last week. And I said I was probably going to do a round of canning after that just to have other stuff canned up. Um, so different recipes, different pickles. So we go and play around with that. All right, so I weighed out all of my cucumbers. I have a little over seven pounds. I'm using the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving today. I feel like I always have to like double check that I said this right. It's one of my favorite books though. This is a really good reference to have on hand if you're wanting to get into canning. I'm gonna be using the pick a vegetable dill pickle recipe today. So I'm gonna get my cucumbers all cleaned up and put into some salt, ice, water to sit for about a few hours and then we will get to pickling. So I gotta do that set first, but might as well get to it. <laughs>
right, I'm just gonna use my mortar to help press this down, make sure everything stays under. All right, we let it sit. So my peppers are all washed up and I'm just going to top them and kind of slice them down the side like this to expose the inside. With the cayennes, I let the seeds stay in because I use these for red chili flakes. I don't really worry too much about wearing gloves when it comes to cayennes because I'm not like really messing with the flesh of the pepper. But when it comes to really doing any other type of pepper, especially when I make salsa or I'm having to scrape out jalapenos or something like that, I will definitely wear gloves. You don't want your fingers to burn all day. I have definitely had that experience where I have chopped up a ton of jalapenos to do like pickled jalapenos. And next thing you know, my hands were burning all day. It was awful. All right, so with paprikas, I don't have that many, but we're gonna go ahead and dry what we got. Just going to take the top off, slice it open. And then these are sweeter, so I'm not gonna really worry. I'm just gonna take out that little bit of flesh, shake out any extra seed, and then lay this one a little bit more flat. It's a little bit thicker of a skin, but paprika, in my experience, this is a Hungarian magar. Um, I get the seeds from Renee's garden. I get that question a lot. Um, they, they dry out really, really fast. This is my third year growing this pepper and it's definitely probably my favorite pepper in the garden. If you have never grown it, I highly suggest putting that on your list for next year. There is nothing like homegrown paprika powder, which I got almost so close to having a year's worth last year. So I got to about two or three weeks ago, I finally ran out of my paprika and today is the first paprikas I harvested. So we got really close to a year's worth. Paprika is one of those spices that I use minimum once a day. Typically it's a twice a day thing, especially on eggs, chicken. I mean, paprika, mashed potatoes, it goes on everything. So it's an amazing pepper to grow. All right, the rest I'm gonna save for pickles here later. So let's go ahead and get this on. Do, do, do. All right, so I just got all of my jars starting to warm up. I got my lids washed and now I'm going to go ahead and get the vinegar solution for our pickles going. Ugh, looky there. I need the smallest amount. All right, so the one thing I am going to do differently, which isn't necessarily a component that's too different, I wouldn't just tweak a recipe when I'm canning just because the ratios can vary and then your product can no longer be safe. So here though, what I'm going to change is I'm gonna make this slightly more of a hot dill pickle versus just a regular dill pickle because here I have about half a cup of green pepper chopped. I'm actually just going to use all jalapenos instead to make it more of a hot pepper recipe instead of just using one jalapeno. Um, so that's what we're going to do a little different. I also might chop a few cayennes in there as well, but overall I'm still keeping the pepper ratio the same. This recipe does call for seeded peppers. So I'm going to go ahead and get gloves on kind of how I mentioned earlier here, um, because when you are scraping out a jalapeno, a cayenne, any type of hot pepper, you really do not want that juice to get onto your hands and underneath your nails. It will sting. It is not a fun thing, especially if you need to shower later on that day. Um, I've made that mistake where I literally didn't wear gloves and then I thought I was okay and then I went into the shower and started washing my hair and my hands were burning. It was awful. We are definitely more of a spicy family over here, so the hotter the better in our book. This recipe literally calls for one jalapeno and that is just not enough spice in my book. So I'd rather just get rid of all the sweet pepper and do all jalapeno and cayenne.
All right, so I'm taking my jar tongs, getting the jar out. I'm only doing one jar at a time here. I'm going to start by actually adding in our pickling spears first. It's kind of helpful if you kind of just tip the jar over and hold it very loosely since it is pretty hot. This also allows you to pack the cucumbers in a lot easier. That way they're not flopping over and everything. It's a lot easier to get them a little bit more snug in here. So we're gonna add a bunch of our cucumbers in. And then once we get close here, I'm gonna add what, one more? I'm going to add a clove of garlic. We're gonna shove that in there. We're going to add two tablespoons of our hot peppers. Kind of tap that down there to kind of get them to work in. And then we're going to do a few sprigs of dill here. Kind of similar story. We're gonna just put this off into the side. And I honestly think we might be able to fit one more cucumber in here. You want your uh, cucumbers to be pretty snug in the jar. Let's see here. There we go. All right, and I actually don't need my uh, funnel at all. With these wide mouth jars and doing pickles like this, it's kind of just easier to not use it. So I'm gonna ladle some of my pickling solution in. Let me add a little bit more. Once we get to kind of the desired headspace, we are going for a half an inch headspace here. We are going to take our debubbling tool and we're gonna go through, press this around, make sure nothing really pops out, but this will help release any air bubbles and it will actually lower your liquid a little bit. So this is a really important step to always make sure you're doing when you're canning because this will really change your liquid level. So now that we got that through, let's check here. We need a little bit more liquid. Close. Perfect, all right. So I'm gonna take my towel here with my vinegar and water, wipe the rim of the jar, take my lid, make sure my lid is center, and then we're gonna take the band and fingertip tight. You don't wanna tighten that down too much. If you tighten it down too much, it can actually, um bend the lid and the seal can be all messed up and whatnot. All right, so I'm gonna go through and do each jar. All right, so we are going to get this up to a boil. Um, once it starts to rapid boil, which means to continuously boil, we will start our timer there for 10 minutes. I am going to scoop this over to this one though. All right, so we're gonna listen out for boiling. Once it is rapidly boiling, 10 minutes, and then we take them out of the canner. In the meantime, I am going to get some stuff cleaned up. We actually had pretty much the perfect amount for eight pints worth. Um, I did have a few leftover cucumber spears, um, but honestly, nothing too crazy. So not bad about it. So I will actually also be using this silicone mat for when we take out the jars as well. They will sit on this rack as they cool down. So I like to put down a barrier no matter what since I have wooden uh, countertops. So I like to use like this little piece of um, like material board and then I will put this on top with a towel. 
I like to cool my jars over here because I typically put all of my dishes I need to wash over here. All right, we just got up to boiling, 10 minutes. We're gonna let that calm down for about five minutes. All right, I'm just gonna take everything out of the canner and set it over on my little spot over here. I'm not going to move these for until probably tomorrow morning once they cool down, check the lids and all of that, but they are done. So as I said earlier, it was going to be really hot today. It currently feels like 102. So I'm gonna go check on the girls, collect eggs. Looks like they are all just kind of relaxing inside the coop coop actually. Probably where it is coolest since there is sand. Brought them all the cucumber scraps. Hi girlies. Here you go ladies. Here you go. Let's see how many eggs we got today. We got six today. It does look like my onions are, oh yeah. My onions are definitely falling over uh, more since this morning. Yeah, so looky there. All of these are starting to plop over. Definitely more over here plopping over. Looks like these ones are starting to fall as well. Oh, and there's some more. Yeah, probably after, say after today and tomorrow, tomorrow's supposed to be hotter than today. I think it will definitely take these out. So, hmm, that's crazy. I had a feeling a lot of them were gonna start to fall over today. You know what we're about to do with how warm it is? Today is a great day to make some sun tea. I totally forgot this was something I wanted to do today. And honestly, it could be out there for an hour or two and it'd probably be amazing. All right, so I have a little bit of time to kill before I can go outside, or it's a good time to go outside because it is hot. It is hot up. So I'm going to do a little bit of crochet on my temperature blanket and probably do a few rows. I'm not gonna do a lot, um, at least as of right now. It's already four o'clock. So I'm just going to do a little bit on the blanket and try to make some progress on the month of June. I am a little bit behind as we speak. I'm trying to have this done though by July 1st. I'm really shocked. So I'm about to crochet. Wow. We only have had four days in the 90s and then out of nowhere today, it's already over 100. The feel like right now is I think 105 already. But that's crazy. Yeah, because the... Um, the row I'm currently crocheting, this color here, it's for 80 degrees. And as you can see, we've had a good amount of 80s. And this red color right here is 90s. I think we've only had, I've only crocheted three or four days in the 90s. Um, and today I actually get to use, oh, for today I get to add a whole new color to the temperature blanket. I have used every single color on my chart now minus my very coldest, which is everything 19 degrees Fahrenheit and below. Um, we'll see how this December is, because last December we did get that cold, but we didn't get that cold uh, yet this year. So yeah, I get to add um, a new color. I don't, I probably won't be able to add it today, um, but I will be adding it in the next few days. 
This has been such a fun project, especially because just seeing the differences between months, colors, patterns, it's really cool to see how it all comes together even though none of it's planned, which is good for me because I am an avid planner. All right, so my paprikas need a little bit more time, but my cayennes have been done. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer them over here to the blender. And then I'm just going to pulse them a few times and they're gonna turn into red chili flakes really, really fast. <laughs> Now you have red chili flakes. This is still the amount I have from last year. I've actually been able to grow a year's worth of cayenne red chili flakes the last few years. Wow. That is a massive bumblebee. Oh no, where'd it go? Was it a bumblebee? I thought it was a bumblebee. It is 8 p.m. And it still feels like 100 degrees out. I waited a while to come out tonight. So like the sun is now starting to go down. But I wanted to get my uh, melon cradles up on my watermelons. They're starting to get really heavy. And then I was just going to check on everything. I'm probably going to wait to water anything else again till the morning. Um, but I'm just going to check on everything because that's, that's who I am. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here's the big, big bee. Look at this thing. Holy crap, it's massive. That might be the biggest bee I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know if this does it to scale. It's so big. Wow, I can't believe I saw it again. Guys, look at some of these loofahs we have on this plant already. They look beautiful. All right, so here's the watermelon here. You can see there's quite a bit of weight right there. The heavier, oh, hold on. I love having a bird bath. It's so much fun. I've been seeing bees and butterflies also drink from it, but it's so much fun having the birds around. Before I do anything, I'm, I'm going to fill up my bird bath because it's really hot. <gasps> and there's a bee trying to get a drink, like I just said. Hold on, I'm gonna wait for the bee. So I kind of just loop each handle over and over and then kind of stick one over top of each other and make like a little slip knot almost. That way I can easily take it off too, but it's still supporting the plant. See, it just takes all that extra stress off the vine and it can just sit in this little thing. Obviously I will keep checking them and moving them and whatnot, but this really does does help these heavier melons. All right, you ready? Come on, let's go to bed. Come on, let's go to bed. Come on, girlies. Bedtime. Look how beautiful these Romas are. Or these are Supremos, but they are a Roma type of variety. I am so excited. Look at these ones blushing too. 
So pretty. So yeah, I will actually probably let those ripen a few more days and then I pull them when they're a little bit more blush than they currently are, let them finish ripening on my counter for the most part. And then I go through and I actually freeze my tomatoes until I have a large quantity to make sauce. So um, that is probably the game plan for those, but it is extremely hot. I can't believe how warm and muggy it currently is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back inside because it's just not a nice evening to be out doing much and I honestly don't have much to do. I have a lot to do in the morning when it's cool, but not so much tonight. Either way guys, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.